Okay, so before we were looking at our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and we saw that from the top view it looks like this. What we actually see is something like this, and it's a form of spiral galaxy. But let's take a look at some other galaxies. Now this one here is called the Andromeda Galaxy, which I think it looks really cool. This is a spiral galaxy, and uh, this you might recognize this from uh, Apple commercials, for example. They often use this right here as their background. This is actually called the Andromeda Galaxy. Now it has a distance of around 2.5 mega light years, which means it's around 2.5 million light years away. So that means it takes light from this galaxy around 2.5 million years to get here, which I think is really crazy. So this is actually the farthest object that the human eye can see unaided. So if you know where to look in the sky, and actually maybe I'll show you that. Uh, if you know your constellations, there's one called uh, Cassiopeia. It does something like this. It looks like a big sort of W in the sky. Uh, so people often draw it like this. It's like a little sort of W in the sky. If you can find that one in the sky, in the northern hemisphere at least, uh, you sort of make a, sort of from this piece of the W here, make a little line like this, and it's around here. That's around where you find the Andromeda galaxy. Now the problem is, is that if you look right at it, you won't actually see it. I mean, when I've actually tried to look for the Andromeda galaxy, I can't actually see it exactly. So what I have to do is I have to sort of use what's called averted vision, which means I'll maybe look over here, and then if I focus right here, my peripheral vision, sort of the corner of my eye, tells me, oh, there's something fuzzy over here. It's really fuzzy looking. It doesn't look like this. You need a really good telescope to see it look like this. Your own eyes, it just looks like a smudge. And if you look right at it, it sort of disappears. And that's actually because of the way your own eye works. It turns out the center of your retina, the center of your sort of detector of your eye, doesn't work as well for very dim objects. It turns out the sort of side of your eye. So if you sort of look over here, focus somewhere, let's say over here or over here, uh, you know, you sort of put your eyes right there, sort of focus on that, your eyes will be able to say, oh, there's something smudge faint over here. If you used a telescope or something really good, then you might actually see it look like this. So this looks really amazing. You can see um, it's a spiral galaxy much like our own, and you can see these dust lanes going across like this, and you can see these spirals going along like this right here. I think it's beautiful. Now, when astronomers take pictures like this, um, it doesn't always look exactly like this. In fact, astronomers will take different wavelengths pictures. In other words, it's not like your camera where you just say, click. What an astronomer will do is say, ooh, I would like to see red. So they will use their telescope to only look at red, so it'll look like a black and white picture, but it turns out that tells them all the red information. And then maybe then they take another picture in blue or infrared or ultraviolet or whatever. And when they're done, they'll use things like even Photoshop for, to put all the layers on top of each other and take, okay, all the black and white stuff that's uh, supposed to be from the red, I'll make it look red. And then I'll make the blues look blue, I'll make the greens look green. And then they put it all together and maybe they can sort of play around and tweak different features to make certain things sort of pop out. So you'll see sort of reddish looking things or pink things or something that, you know, astronomers often use. Um, for example, I know that uh, I was often using uh, hydrogen alpha lines, which is a line that's often associated with a star being born. Um, then we can actually see if there's lots of star birth being done. So sometimes we sort of overexpose those things to sort of make them pop out so we can make them more apparent. But if you look at this, though, it's really cool. This thing is 2.5 million light years away, which means you're looking at it literally what it looked like 2.5 million years ago. That's how it looked, because it took like that long to get to you. Which means if we wanted to talk to an alien in that galaxy, we could send a signal. We could say, hello, how are you doing? Well, when we send that signal, that would be a radio signal flying through space. It would take 2.5 million, uh, million years for that signal to get to them. And assuming they got it and sent it back, we'd have to wait another 2.5 million years to get the signal back. So that makes communication across space very difficult. At least it makes it very lengthy. You have to be very patient. Uh, what's interesting about the Andromeda galaxy, though, um, we think it's very similar in size and nature to our own galaxy. So if you looked at our own galaxy sort of from the side, sort of not the top view, not the side view, but sort of halfway between the top and the side, then this is what it might look like. And it turns out this galaxy and our own are on a collision course. 
So most galaxies we look at are actually moving away from us, and we think that's actually due to the expansion of the universe. But the Andromeda galaxy is coming towards us. Well, it's a little bit difficult to say that. We could say we're coming towards each other. And that's because in space there's no fixed reference frame, which means if I say I'm coming towards you, um, you know, that's compared to you. Whereas, um, you know, it's hard to know who's going towards who because there's, you know, if you define a distance or a speed, you have to define a speed relative to something else. And there's something weird in space, at least, that there's no sort of fixed coordinate system. There's no zero, there's, you know, there's no sort of zero point in the universe because everything is moving and shifting. So all we can say is we're coming towards each other, which means eventually our two galaxies will sort of mix. And we're going to sort of have this dance and where these two galaxies are going to meet. So our own and this one are going to eventually meet up with each other. The Andromeda galaxy has a little satellite galaxy right here. It's a little one sort of orbiting, and it's got some other things, but I think it looks really beautiful. Now, another galaxy we can look at is called the Whirlpool galaxy. I think it looks really awesome as well. So the distance to the Whirlpool galaxy, it's around 23 light years away. Whoops, not 23 light years, 23 mega light years. So it's around 23 million light years away. Now this is also, this is a nice top view of a spiral galaxy. So you can see it does sort of look like a whirlpool. And I think uh, these astronomers have actually made these red features sort of pop out because these are knots where, you know, there's likely uh, compressed gases where um, lots of new stars are being born. And that tells you a lot. And these dark spots, those are dust lanes, so that's where there's lots of dust. And these bright spots are where you see lots of stars. Now there's so many stars, it's hard to see individual stars, so you just sort of see the effect of all of them. But what's really cool about this is it's an interacting galaxy. So whereas the uh, Andromeda galaxy and our own is sort of a spiral galaxy, this is a system of this one is interacting with this one. In other words, they're close enough to each other where their gravities are affecting each other. You can see that this spiral is sort of going off into this little mini galaxy, which means over time they're probably going to sort of both sort of keep dancing around each other and mixing until they become sort of one bigger galaxy. So that's, I think, a really pretty one. It's called the Whirlpool Galaxy. There's another one called the Sombrero Galaxy. Uh, that one has a distance of around, I think it's 29 mega light years. So that's 29 million years it would take for the light to get from here to us. So this is a spiral galaxy seen mostly from its side. Look at all the dust lanes here. You can see the dust sort of from the side here. I mean, it was called a sombrero galaxy because it's supposed to be looking a little bit like a sombrero, you know, this sort of hat that you might want to wear. I know that, you know, a lot of uh, American tourists who go travel to Mexico, they come back from Mexico with this sort of sombrero hat. And I can say that when I've gone to Mexico, I actually haven't seen many Mexicans actually wear these hats, so it may just be a stereotype. But anyway, it's called a sombrero galaxy. I think it looks really pretty. Now, um, this star right here, this dot, this is not an alien or anything. These sort of spikes like this, those are just an artifact of the telescope that you use. So usually this is caused by a star that's in the foreground. In other words, um, this is a star that's in your way. So imagine a star that's between us and that galaxy. In other words, it's probably a star in our own galaxy. It just happens to be in the way of the picture. It's like if you're trying to take a nice picture of, I don't know, a field, and your friend just sort of pops their head in front. You're like, oh, get away. Well, that's just a star that's in the way. So don't worry about these spikes here. That's not aliens or anything. Um, but this right here is the important thing to look at. That's the galaxy. I think it looks really, really cool. So even better than that is something called the Hubble Extreme Deep Field. They've done a whole bunch of these different ones. They've done the Hubble Deep Field, then they did what's called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. The idea was this. They tried to look at, with the, the best you know, optical telescope there is, it's called the Hubble Telescope. Uh, that one is actually out in outer space, so it's actually orbiting the Earth. They do that because the Earth's atmosphere makes stars twinkle, and that's just the atmosphere making the stars sort of look really weird. So if you want to sort of untwinkle the stars, because what it does, it makes everything look really blurry. So if you want to see a really, really good picture of, uh, of this outer space, you have to go out to space to take the picture, which makes it really expensive. So this Hubble Space Telescope has been around since the 90s, and it's been taking lots and lots of pictures. It costs billions of dollars, but it's one of the, you know, at least astronomers, it's one of the really cool telescopes that have been made.
there's lots of other ones too, but that's uh, one of the most famous. So what they decided to do was to take a picture of a really dark spot in the sky. Now this just shows a rough idea of how small a spot they looked. So if this is the moon, let's say if this is sort of to scale, if this was the moon, they looked at a tiny little spot in the sky around this big compared to the moon. So it's a very, very small little spot. And what they did then is they looked at the smallest little spot like this. It looked very, very dark. And they zoomed way in and took a picture for a long time. Now, why do they have to picture, take a picture for a long time? Maybe you've experienced this with your own camera phone. So maybe, for example, with your either Android or iPhone or whatever you're using, um, if you try to take a picture when it's sort of dark and you try to picture, take a picture of your friends or something else, have you noticed that you know when it's really dark, you take a picture without a flash, everything looks really blurry? And that's because when it's dark, there's not enough light reaching the sensor of your phone in order to make a nice picture. So what happens then is everybody looks really blurry. Now what you could do is turn on the flash, of course. The problem is in outer space, it's very difficult to have a flash. It doesn't really work. So what we have to do instead is just take a really long picture. So if you asked your friends to be really, really still and you held your camera really, really still, then it would work. You could actually take a nice picture in very, very dark conditions. Maybe you had a tripod, and maybe you forced your friends to smile really creepily for a long time. So what they've done, they've done this equivalent with the Hubble Extreme Deep Field. They looked at this spot in the sky for super long. They focused on it for a really long time. Now how long um, they actually looked at it, it's the equivalent of around 23 days. So it's, it's as if you sort of kept looking at the same spot without blinking for 23 days. Now they didn't do it all at once. It was actually a combination of a bunch of different pictures they've done over a period of 10 years. But when they looked at that, this is what they saw. I think this picture here blows my mind. This is the Hubble Extreme Deep Field. So in this picture right here, okay, there are, so this is what's really cool, they took one of the darkest spots in the sky and almost every single thing you see here, remember some of these are sort of stars in the foreground or like this one right here, but almost everything else, look at this thing, this, 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 these are all galaxies. So in that one right there, there's around 5,000, uh, how many were there? There are around 5,500 galaxies. So around 5,500 galaxies. Just in one picture. And that was from zooming on one of the darkest spots in the sky. Just for a really long time, almost everything they see here is a galaxy, which is mind-blowing. Because remember, these galaxies, each of them has billions of stars. From what we know now, most stars have planets going around them. That's something we know only recently. And how many of those planets have life on them? We don't know. That's something that's difficult to know. But I think it brings up really cool questions. And I think this is sort of mind-blowing. That they just focused in on one of the darkest spots in the sky that looked like the most boring. And this is what they saw. 5,500 galaxies in this tiny little field of view. Now they looked so far back. Um, I mean, these ones right here, I mean, you're seeing things that are, you know, are, you know, from near the beginning of time. In other words, you're seeing things that are billions of light years away. Okay, so things are billions of light years away. In other words, we say some of these are going to have distances of, a, you know, of things in giga light years, we say. Giga light years means billions. Or just like if you're using a computer and you have gigabytes or gigahertz, that's billions. So it's giga light years away, which is really, really cool. And this thing could see really faint things. I mean, some of these objects are so faint. I mean, we could never see them with our own eye. I mean, some of them are, you know, one ten billionth of what we can actually see. So I think that's just mind blowing. So my mind just sort of almost exploded when I heard about this. So this is this sort of mind-blowing picture. It may not look like much, but this means so much. If you look at this, there's a nice spiral galaxy from the side. Here's probably an elliptical galaxy. Here's another elliptical galaxy. Look at all these galaxies. They're everywhere. And the faintest ones of those are around 13 billion light years away. And we think that's about as far as we can see.